Hello, Work Life Warriors. I hope you're doing well. Today, I want to read a poem to you from this book. This is the last poem I'm going to read for this book. I finished it a couple of months ago. I just hadn't had the opportunity to record the last four poems. So I'm just reading them, getting them out the way so we can start a new poetry book come September. So the poem I'm reading today is called Feel Free, and it's by Natasha Turpley. And it says, the year the white woman came like the plague was when me and my girls took to backwater, cornfields, and the shimmy. Girl, I love the way you shake. Time lunch bell rang. We were out at Roderick's Field, barefoot and loose haired, hit it. Marva pounded a beat on her thigh, and Frida stepped, stepped, like walking to Jesus. Do the snake girl and wind yourself and wind herself up to trembling. We will come in then hard and fast, shaking till we sweat to sweat drip from our fingers. Marva stopped her beat, but we will still go on. The sound of our own feet, the screaming of crows, the wind snap slapping corn stalks, even a heartbeat. Some say we was begging for the devil. But we were just dancing and we got through that feel vibrated like all the Memphis rolling beneath us in a place where Frida stood. The ground was worn to the roots. Even the earth could not resist that step. We was bad, bad girls. I absolutely love this poem because, again, um, I teach stress management, one of the tools that I use. Of course, it's dance, and this poem was all about dance, but so many things struck me. But the most important, which made me want to record this video, is we do not realize how many um, things that we do today were simply illegal back in the day. People, and not just illegal, they were frowned upon back in the day. Uh, many people back in the day uh, thought that when you danced a certain way that you were corrupted um, by energy, by spirit, by the devil, that it was not, um, it was, it was frowned upon to dance and, and move in certain ways. It was not considered ladylike or considered, uh, acceptable behavior. And so now when we think about all of the things now that we do, in our day and age, and we don't even realize that many people, you know, died or had to fight for the right for us to do these things. Most in particularly like comedy, dancing, things like that. People don't even think how much it was illegal. Think about cursing. Uh, people used to be killed or get their tongues cut out for cursing. And now people curse everywhere. We curse often. We curse at work. We curse in church. Um, dancing, people, it was frowned upon. And now you have twerking everywhere. You have all types of dancing everywhere. Um, dancing with partners, that was a thing that was frowned on, frowned upon back in the day. But now you have many different genres of dance where people are partnering and touching each other. Um, dress, styles of dress change. People, you know, weren't allowed to wear certain things. They were punished. Comedy was one of those things you weren't even allowed to laugh and to laugh at certain things. You weren't allowed to tell what was deemed as inappropriate jokes. So, so many of our liberties that we have today, somebody fought and died for. And therefore, you should have a little bit more honor and respect when it comes to utilizing the, you know, whatever it is, the tools or whatever it is that, you know, was illegal back in the day. So if laughter was so illegal, I feel like now we should be laughing, laughing more. We should be more intentional about laughing. It's a reason why people fought to, you know, make it a standard. Same thing with dancing. We don't really dance a lot as adults. It's the only time we dance, it has to be in contact. But dancing is a way to decrease cortisol in your body, to bring you into the present moment. It has so many health and wellness benefits, but we barely utilize them. And so again, it's in our best interest to manage stress and to do the things that will bring happiness, joy, peace, love to our life and will increase the overall quality of our lives. But we don't do them. 
People fought for us to be able to do them, but once it was no longer risky anymore, we kind of just take it for granted and we don't utilize them even though they can benefit us in so many ways. So I thought this poem was very interesting because it ended with the women feeling a little shameful for just dancing, uh, for just letting free, letting all of the energy out them, connecting with what's greater to ground themselves. Uh, they talked about dancing so hard, they wore the ground out. How many of our ancestors did that and celebrated throughout the night by dancing their uh, dancing uh, to accomplishments or just making another day or harmony or community or whatever it is? We should dance more. We should enjoy life more. We should do the things that bring us joy more than the things that we're obligated to do. So I just thought that that was a very great poem to kind of tie this whole collection um, up. This was a really good collection of poems. Uh, I learned so much. It invoked so many feelings. Um, I had a great, I think I read it over like two months. It had over um, about 250 pages in it. And so I would read like maybe three, four poems a day. And um, I picked out the ones that I really enjoyed and wanted to share with you to kind of see what you thought. So please tell me what do you think about the things that were deemed illegal back then or were frowned upon? And how often do you do them now? How often do you incorporate them into your life, especially ones that the ones that are efficient for increasing the quality of your life or decreasing cortisol in your body or helping you to manage stress or stay in the present moment? Please share with me what do you think? And I will We'll see you in September with another poem and poetry book. I hope this helps work life warriors. Enjoy your day.